This is closely related to a Chinese dish that uses whole head on shrimp. You can use those too if you want as I show at the start of the video, but it's even better with peeled shrimp. There are two steps to this recipe, and once you finish the first part, you can keep everything ready to go for hours until the guests arrive, and then finish up the dish in under five minutes, which also makes it perfect for restaurant service, of course. And the first decision you need to make is what kind of shrimp you're going to use. These whole uh, shell-on, head-on shrimp are the traditional type. And they do have more shrimp flavor to them. They pack, they're packed with shrimp flavor. The problem is that they are going to be chewy no matter what you do to them and you're going to have little bits of shrimp shell stuck between your teeth when you eat them. Uh, it's really unpleasant for me. Some people don't mind it. Some people like it. They, they like that texture. So, you know, it's, it's up to you. I didn't grow up eating this kind of shrimp. Uh, otherwise, you can eat, you can use regular shrimp uh, and whether or not you leave the tail on is up to you. The tail will obviously add uh, some crunch factor too. Again, traditional to have the shrimp with the heads and the tails and everything. This is kind of a happy medium to me. You can have it this way and then if the person eating it really doesn't like that shell, they can, they can still hold it by the tail and, and, and bite off the rest of it. So in a restaurant, I would, I would probably make it this way unless it was a Chinese restaurant and then people are going to expect it the other way. I'm just doing a few here just to, just to show you. Um, the next step is you dust them in an excess of cornstarch. Not really dust them, you just put them in a bowl with, with more cornstarch than they could possibly absorb and uh, let them sit like this for a few minutes. This is after you've dried them, of course. Um, the oil has to get hot, and then we're going to first deep fry these. And use a splatter guard when you're cooking these. Now we have all of the ingredients ready to proceed. Uh, light peanut oil, the vodka chili sauce from the other recipe, some scallions I'm going to cut up into large pieces, ginger, garlic, uh, some sugar. You can also use honey for this. Um, sprinkling sugar gives you a little bit better control over it, but you know, honey is actually more traditional. Uh, the garlic, which I'm going to cut up, the shrimp I just deep fried, and a uh, little soy sauce. Very simple list of ingredients here. The exact proportions here are variable. You can control it how you like it. I'm using a ginger, garlic, scallions that have been cut into large pieces, but uh, this is a very small amount because I'm only making half a dozen of these of these shrimp. So uh, you have to scale it up accordingly. I'm using a stainless steel pan for this. Don't try to use nonstick for this because it's too hot. It will ruin the pan. The uh, coating will start to come off. It's not going to be pretty. So I'm adding a fair amount of this light peanut oil to the pan. It's uh, The pan's already hot, but it's not quite hot enough yet. So here's the ginger and the garlic. I cook this for about 30 seconds to a minute, something like that. After about 30 seconds, you can see that there's starting to be some brown already because this pan is very hot. So the shrimp are going to go in next, followed by chopped scallion. The heat right now is on about 8.5 out of 10, very hot. Now I'm going to add a little bit of this vodka chili sauce on top, directly on top of each shrimp. And a little bit of soy sauce. So you have to be careful. Don't use too much soy sauce or the whole thing will just taste like soy sauce. You want it there for the salt and the umami. But this isn't shrimp and soy sauce, so use care. And now, a sprinkle of sugar over each shrimp. And I'm going to kill the heat. This is very fast 
cooking dish as you can see. And we're going to transfer it off to a plate. I'm very pleased to announce the release of Volume 3, the focus on food chemistry. I want to clear up a few things about these three volumes. First, they all contain completely different information. There's no duplication. They're not revisions. When I wrote Volume 1, I had two and a half years of YouTube videos to cover. People had been asking me for the printed list of ingredients for all of those dishes, and so I obliged. There are recipes with stepwise directions and many tips offered throughout, as well as an extensive history of Russian cuisine over the last thousand years, but Volume 1 is very different from Volume 2 and 3. In Volumes 2 and 3, I only had about nine months of YouTube recipes to cover in each, so I was able to provide stepwise directions for everything. In Volume 2, I included a lot of additional information about cooking and some simple examples of flavor chemistry to set the stage for Volume 3. While Volume 2 hopefully got you thinking about some of the processes that go on in cooking and how flavors are expressed and sensed at the molecular level, the topic was painted with pretty broad strokes to make it easy to digest. Pun intended. Volume 3 is a milestone of the series, in which I've included an entire introductory course in food chemistry, which is why Volume 3 is about 70 pages longer than Volume 2. And if you just want the recipes, that's okay too. You don't have to read the first few chapters. But if you've ever been curious about what influences tastes and flavors, and the rationale for deciding cooking times and temperatures, and why things taste different when they're combined in different ways, this book will answer many of those questions. It also paves the way for Volume 4, which will be next year. If you want to know more about my adventures as a chef around the world and have some great laughs along the way, be sure to check out the video tour of my book, 40 Years in One Night. It's up on YouTube right now. Click the link. Also look for my cocktail book, Cocktails of the South Pacific and Beyond, Advanced Mixology, available through Amazon online.